redisplay the picture. Let's go ahead and add the pan functionality. This is the pan tool strip menu item. First thing we want to do uh, on this menu is if it's already checked, that means we're unchecking, we're going to uncheck it and we're going to change the cursor back to the default cursor. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and change the menu item to true and check it. Uncheck the select tool, disable or enable the copy tool or disable, excuse me, disable the copy tool because we're, that only functions when you're in a selection rectangle mode and also the print we're going to disable. We're going to disable draw right or reset draw rectangle to false and that's just a variable. We're going to invalidate the picture we're going to make the cursor hand. So that's going to redraw the screen, reset the screen and, and give us a cursor hand. Now we actually use the cursor as the variable to tell us if we're going to do a select or a pan on the screen. Here's the select routine. It's pretty much the same thing as the pan, only we're just uh, selecting the select tool and a couple other settings and again changing the, the type of cursor to a cross instead of the hand or the default pointer. Next routine, now we're getting into the more uh, of the drawing ish, uh, points here, is the pick mouse down, which handles the, the mouse down event. And if, I, if the cursor is across, then we must be doing the draw rectangle function. So I'm going to go ahead and draw rectangle to true. And I'm going to get the mouse start, x and y, and the mouse end x and y equal to this location plus one because I always have to have at least one point or the, the subroutine would fail that I call from here. And then if the picture cursor is a hand that means that we're doing a pan so what I want to do is just set this variable to a new point pointing to the location of uh, the mouse. And this is going to be the mouse move event. What we're going to do is verify the left button is pressed while the mouse is moving. If it is pressed and the mouse is moving and the cursor is across, we're doing the rectangle. So we're going to draw the rectangle end and keep doing that as the mouse moves and keep refreshing the screen. And then if the cursor is a hand and the left mouse, mouse is down, button is down, then we're doing a pan and we're going to get the pan start point which we set before, subtract the position we're at now and then set a new auto scroll position and this is always positive so we set this to always positive now the next section here I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste is the uh, pick paint function this actually draws the rectangle so if we selected the selection tool and draw a rectangle will be pos uh, true, then we're going to go ahead and go through this routine. Now this is where the, the feature comes in to where the, you actually draw the, the, the red box on the screen. And I've got it labeled here as, as the functionality of how I got the different uh, X and Y axes to work drawing the mouse. Since you have, to, you have to remember that when you draw a rectangle, the values always have to be positive. So the new point and new size always have to be positive. And uh, 
the, the box is always drawn from upper left to lower right. So the upper left point is how Microsoft's Visual Basic actually starts drawing the image. So for me to get this to work right, I had to do uh, a little bit of logic. It's like if I'm moving the cursor uh, left and up, I need to know where that upper and leftmost icon is. And I did that by um, up and left here. You can see if, if I'm going up and left, that means the mouse X variable is going to be less than zero because it's going to be negative because I started out uh, down and to the right and so is mouse Y is going to be negative. So if I use the end variables and then take the absolute of mouse X and Y, then I get my drawing uh, rectangle to move, in re to move the right way. It's, it's pretty much that simple. This one here is how it would normally draw, down and to the right, where both things are positive, and just go ahead and draw it. There's no calculations or anything you have to do. If uh, one of the variables is positive, and the other is negative, like this one is this one is negative, this one's positive. I have to do an absolute on just the one variable to make sure it's positive. And if you notice here, I use the end instead of the start for the x, and vice versa for down and to the left. I use the end for the y and absolute for the y. And then just to be safe, I did a try catch phrase to draw the rectangle just to make sure it didn't error out on me. And that should pretty much do it. Let's go ahead and save our project. And let's go ahead and build and run it. Oh, one thing I forgot to do here. Is assign the context menu strip picture box. Now uh, let's go ahead and run it. Right click, load image, there we have an image, zoom 200%, zoom 25%, rotate the image, let's select something, let's take a pill, copy to selection, paste it, that works, let's go ahead and Set my default printer here. Yeah, let's go ahead and print the selection. You see here the default is document. And you can see I printed the PDF document. Reset the image. Pan tool. I resize this. Gives me a little more room. Load a different image. Zoom. And Uncheck pan, then it does nothing. Select tool, uncheck select tool, does nothing. Notice the zoom tool checkboxes have been clicking as I moved around. Reset image again. And we're good. One thing I forgot to do here. And I'll show you when I run the program. 
all these are enabled. The only one that should be enabled is load image. So let's go ahead quickly in there and take care of that. Uh, make a little more room here. If I click on each one of these, I want to set enable to false with the exception of load image. None of these work unless we have an image to work with. So why would they be enabled? Okay, so now let's go ahead and run it again. Now we have everything disabled except load image. Once I load an image, now my menus are enabled correctly. Well, that's about wraps it up. I hope you like this. I will uh, put a text file out there with all this, this uh, code in there so you can go ahead and uh, download that and incorporate it in any of your applications. Thank you very much.